Okay, good morning. Uh, it's Friday morning and uh, big day today. I'm heading over to Lynn's Bitch and Stitching to go pick up the interior for the uh, for the 51. And uh, I guess she's got it all wrapped up. Um, so we'll get it home, unwrap it, and uh, I'll show you what we got. It's uh, I did get a sneak preview of the seat and uh, looks pretty cool. So if the rest of it's like the seat, should have a pretty snazzy looking interior uh don't worry about this it's 05 yeah. but anyway uh painted this last night to get it out of the way so i could pull that out and uh make some room in here and get back to work on the 51 so uh yeah road trip leaving in about 20 minutes half an hour and uh we're gonna go get the interior so let's make it happen All right, so uh, I'm going to jump in my Australian truck here, uh, right-hand drive. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, I use my phone for recording this, and uh, it's in selfie mode, so it's a mirror image. So it's not a right-hand drive. It just looks that way. Um, anyway, we're heading out to Lynn's, and uh, yeah, she's only about, she's less than 10 minutes away. So... Uh, I'm in Sudbury, Ontario, Canada, Northern Ontario, and the part of town I live in is called the Valley. Um, Lynn is also in the Valley, which is handy. And, um, you know, if you're local, you know where the Valley is, of course. And I'm gonna post this video to the uh, local car club's uh, Facebook page. Um, because interior people are hard to find and uh, especially up here so uh, when you find one that's good uh, you know share the information and uh, keep her going and uh, so people can get their projects done uh, the reason I live out in the valley I used to live right in town and the lot was tiny really tiny and um, it was okay because I was building Harleys at the time you know but uh, when I decided to get into cars now I got a transport load with uh, three 37 to 38 Chevy's uh, cars and uh, it was a freaking disaster. The yard was a mess. So I decided to buy out here in the valley. Uh, the lots are a lot bigger. Uh, gearheads are everywhere so nobody bothers you with what you're doing. Everybody's got something in their yard, either a mud bogger, uh, dirt bikes, four wheelers, side by sides something so you know fit right in no problem got junk in the yard no worries uh in town when i had those cars there you know bylaw officers started sniffing around and people were bitching so uh yeah it just worked out better to be out here so that was 11 years ago now and uh all good so yeah we're heading off to Liz. Once I get everything loaded in and uh, head back to the shop, I'll uh, unwrap everything and show you what we got. See you in a bit. All right, so I'm loaded up and trucking, heading back to the shop. Uh, I was hoping to do a bit of an interview with Lynn, but uh, she's got a young fella there, young kid. Uh, let's just say he's a little rambunctious and uh, she can't really leave him alone for uh, even a couple of minutes. So, uh, you know, I asked her a few questions and I'll fill you in some of the details. She, uh, she learned to do this stuff from her mom at the age of 15. And uh, so she's been sewing for 30 years. Uh, her dad's a car guy and uh, her significant other is also a car guy. And... Uh, so when COVID hit, uh, she got laid off and uh, she opened up the upholstery shop, uh, made the two things together, you know, car guys and, uh, and upholstery, and uh, she's doing quite well. So I saw the stuff, it's all packed and wrapped up and everything. I'm going to head to the shop, um, unwrap it, and show you what we got. Um, by the way, Lynn's Bitch and Stitching, it's on 
and uh, she has a Facebook page. You can get a hold of her there, especially if you're a local guy, or even anywhere in Northern Ontario for that matter, because, like I said, upholstery people are hard to find, especially up here. Uh, so that's just the way it is. So, yeah, Lynn's Bitch and Stitching. So if you like what you see when we uh, unwrap this thing, uh, check her out on uh, Facebook and make your own arrangements. She keeps busy though, she's doing boat tops and stuff like that as well. But her favorite thing to do is car seats and, and uh, interior panels for uh, vehicles. So, um, yeah, that's it. So I'll see you back at the shop. Okay, so there's the seat unwrapped and uh, yeah, looks good. Um, my bad here, I mangled this up a little bit during transport, but I, I set this thing up so that um, I can take it apart. I have to take it apart anyway to uh, to get the frame installed. And then you got your door panels here and these are marked out and they're, they're cut for your, put your handles on. I'll have to trim that as I put it in. But you went with the V to match. I mean, this is a nice little touch here, you know. So, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be uh, freaking awesome. And we got the kick panels here and the visors. So I'm going to uh, show you how it matches up here, with the color. So I think it'll go good, you know. Yeah, right on. So, and the back is all done as well. So taking this apart isn't that tough. Um, basically, one, two, three, four nuts, pop the back off, and then I've got two down here, and the whole bottom comes out. So, because what I want to do, I want to take these out, take it apart, uh, get the cushions probably wrapped up and down in my basement out of the way so they don't get damaged or dirty or any of that shit. So, uh, yeah, we're going to put the whole thing away, but I want to get the seat frame installed. And before I do that, I need to get the seat hardware, the adjusters, uh, working. They're seized up. I'll soak them in penetrating oil and get them moving. And uh, then I can put my seat frame in. And because I have this here now as a reference, I know how high the seat's going to be so I can uh, mimic that with something else. I don't know, a five-gallon pail or something. And uh, figure out where my column's going to go. So, yeah. Hang on. What do you think? I like it. I think it's pretty cool. And it's fairly firm. It's not uh, super, uh, you know, you don't sag, sink right into it. Um, but it's got some give. So I think it'll be great. All right. So I've removed the two cushions and salted them away downstairs in the basement. Um, <clears throat> you know, told the kids, don't touch them, don't go near them. If you need something behind them, tell me, I'll move it. Um, touched up the black on the sides where I scuffed it up and uh, <clears throat> going to let it dry now. It's just a black enamel spray bomb. Takes a while. So I threw it in the sun. Hopefully that'll speed things up a little bit. And uh, I've got a couple other little things to do before I get back on this thing. Um, the tailgate I painted last night, I'm going to cut and buff it, finish it off. And hopefully the guy will pick it up tomorrow. So can get it the hell out of here before it gets damaged and uh and i guess i'll be getting back on the box so that's where i'm at right now and uh, i'm just going to carry on i'm not going to bother showing this uh 05 tailgate because no one cares and uh <clears throat> i'll come back after it's done all right so i picked up a brand new can of penetrating oil and i'm gonna snow soak the crap out of this here this whole mechanism here is just right up. Okay, we got on the other side.
this side will move. That's my problem one. Okay, well I'll let that sit for a little bit. Hopefully I can free that side up. Okay, let's see if we got this thing. Ah. Calling it free. So now I can go ahead and put the uh, seat frame in place, bolt it down, and then from there I can measure up to from the top of the frame to uh, the thickness of the uh, seat cushion. This is downstairs in the basement. Uh, set up something in here to mimic the seat height. Then I can figure out exactly where my column is going to go. Uh, so I can make up my bracket and hang the column get it in place because I need that to I still got to order a couple of uh, uh, a couple of steering components uh, Such as a u-joint from the end of the column to the double D shaft and uh, I've got to cut the double D shaft to the proper length. I don't know what that is yet so uh, Yeah, big deal got to get that column in place so I'll show you what that's all about in a second. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So it's amazing how, you know, something 70 years old will free up with a couple of squirts. Unreal. Okay, so this is what's going on here. This is my double D shaft. And it's gonna go from the uh, steering knuckle at the rack and pinion up to another steering knuckle it's going to fit on the shaft and then on the bottom of the uh, column which also has the same size double d at the bottom of it so i've got to order that fitting and i'm going to have to cut this to length now the reason i want to get the column in one of the big reasons is because of this the wiring harness so all your signals and uh everything else is dependent on getting this together uh brake lights all that stuff so yeah, I got to figure all this stuff out and get it in place. So I'm gonna have to build a uh, some sort of a bracket to hang the uh, the column, and another small bracket to fasten it at the floor. So uh, yeah, that's where I'm at on that. Um, gonna take some measurements and stuff, and build myself a temporary fake seat, just a platform to sit on, basically, um, so I can position. Where it's going to go this is also a tilt column so I, i've got room to play a little bit got some adjustment there um but yeah got to get this in oh yeah there's also the horn and the wire as well so that's why i want to get this thing hanging in the right place so that's where i am on that i'm going to show you one other thing before i forget if you're local or northern ontario uh there you go that's lynn's bitch and stitching that's facebook and her email i'm not going to put her phone number on here i found her by uh, just googling lynn's bitch and stitching uh, that's how i found her but uh yeah so is that steady enough for you notice the uh, one eye the first eye is missing and bitching because facebook wouldn't let her put bitching in there <laughs> whatever so there you go. Okay, so that's where we are on that. Um, 
you know the uh the three brothers that had the Chevy in their family for 60 years or so all three brothers were here uh, a few days ago and uh, the one brother who parked the truck for the last time he told me a story and uh, he said he parked it between two small trees with the intention of getting back and fixing it up the following week something wasn't running right or whatever so he's gonna park it park it there for a week get it back running again and, and keep on using it well, he never, never went back, and uh, eventually, when they finally did decide to, you know, get the truck out, um, it was way up in the air. <laughs> the two trees and some branches had grabbed the truck and picked it up in the air. <coughs> it was like 20 feet or higher up in the air, so they had to kind of cut it down, and uh, that's why on the original cab that I had, uh, there was a huge dent from a tree. Well, it was one of those trees that had fallen on the roof and uh, schmucked it in pretty good. But anyway, uh, they did get it out. And, uh, you know, I can't believe how good that, that frame was. Uh, maybe the thing landed on its side or something. I don't know. But uh, the, the frame was straight. And uh, so we're all good there. Uh, I just thought it was kind of funny. It's too bad he didn't. I, I wonder if he took a picture of it or not. If he did, I'd. I'd like him to send it to me. Um, I think it'd be a cool picture. Um, so that's where we are on the steering. Now I got to order, like I said, that, that steering knuckle. And uh, what else? There's a few other things I'm going to need. I still need gauges too. Uh, I've been shopping around. Gauges are freaking expensive, man. Um, yeah, so I spent a good chunk of today just cleaning up in here. Uh, Made a whole bunch of room, cleaned up, swept up, and everything else. Put a bunch of stuff away, organized some parts and whatnot. And my plan is actually to take my 50 Ford and put it outside, um, out of the way. I mean, you know, I brought it in here because I didn't want it out for the outside for the whole winter. Um, but you know, a little bit of rain is not going to hurt this thing, and I can block off the uh, the windows or just tarp over the roof section or whatever. Um, you know, it's got clear on it. It's fine. It's not, it's not going to damage anything. So, yeah, it's going to go outside. That'll give me a lot more working room, room to set up, maybe a table to, uh, you know, uh, make brackets and what have you, a little workstation area kind of thing. Plus, you know, I still got the hood that I've got to paint and the two rear fenders and there's other stuff going on here. And I'd like to bring the box in as well when it's ready for block sanding. So, it just makes sense to put the 50 outside. Um, what else? Eh? Please subscribe. <laughs> uh, you know, I could use all the help I, all the help and support I can get. Um, those of you who have subscribed, thank you very much. But yeah, please subscribe. You know, don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Uh, leave comments. And remember, it costs nothing. It costs nothing to subscribe. You're just helping me out. That's all. And uh, I just want to keep this thing rolling, man. That's all. Uh, having fun with it and uh you know hopefully you guys are getting something out of it so yeah subscribe and uh you know if you're not doing anything else get out in the garage and build something man later guys <laughs>